Hello and welcome to uh, day four of the top 10 most inspiring women series. I am here today with Naomi Girk, the founder and owner of Bowtie Atticus, which is a super cool business that creates um, uh, apparel, the bow ties for animals, pets, and um, they give back a portion of their proceeds, which I am really excited to dig into with Naomi. So uh, welcome, Naomi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, give everybody who hasn't met you yet a little bit of background about what it is that you do. Well, I, I basically make pet bow ties and I also make flowers for collars. And each product is handmade. Um, so of course, everything is personalized to maybe there's a dog that likes a certain color. I will do that as well. Um, I... I sell these at events and, um, I, and I give back, I give back for everything that I make. Um, I started in, in, uh, 2015 and, um, I looked down at Atticus in a bow tie and I was like, you look great in that bow tie Atticus. And then that's how the name came about. And, um, my first event, I made 35 bow ties. I sold 21. That was the start of my very first donation. And now this will be my sixth year. What change do you want to see in the world and how are you aiding that cause? Well, um, coming from the, the animal side of things, um, I would like to see an end to breed specific legislation. If you're not familiar with that, it's, it's um, BSL is the acronym and it is the type of law that prohibits or restricts certain types of breeds of dogs. Um, there's really no evidence um, that supports that, that um, this makes communities any safer. And um, so I educate, I advocate against that um, through petitions, through letters, through my website, uh, through a lot of the events that I do and the rescues and shelters that I support. Um, in 2017, Governor Carney actually uh, signed House Bill 13, which did end BSL in the state of Delaware. And uh, I was very honored to be a part of that with um, the many women and the men who stood up against the fight that uh, canine inequality. Hopefully, my goal is to see it end in my time while I'm here on the earth. But um, regardless, I'll fight it every day. Um, okay, well, tell us about a project or a particular accomplishment that you consider to be uh, one of the most significant in your career? Well, um, of course I support small business. And so um, in an effort during the pandemic, I have a lot of friends who are small business owners themselves, whether it's products as such as the body shop or you know, uh, Color Street, that kind of a thing, but they're still, they're supporting themselves through that business. And I was trying to figure out a way where how could I combine what I do what they do and still give back. So I started what I call the small business give back. And once a month, what I do is I choose a rescue every month through my website. And then I partner with one of the small businesses and we do a week long fundraiser through social media. And then uh, they donate a portion back to the rescue um, on top of my donation. They get new business, I get new business and it's a win win for everybody. Um, I'm already booking businesses into 2022 and I just started this. I did it. October was my official one where I launched um, for Stand Up for Pits uh, with Origami Owl. And it just, it was just amazing. I mean, I mean, she ended up donating over a hundred dollars for, for just a week of sales. How do you define success? Um, okay. So for me, um, I think that success doesn't necessarily mean that you have everything that you want or that you're rich. Um, I think that it's really happiness in what you're doing at any given moment um, and giving yourself the new goals and trying to be proactive and doing what you love. Um, I, my uh, 11th grade advanced creative writing teacher said to me, reward necessitates efforts. And um, to me, that's success. That when, when I have been able to reward myself for the efforts of helping others, that, that to me is success. All right, tell yeah. us about a turning point in your career or your personal life and um, how you pushed through that and what you learned from it. It's funny, I was, I was thinking about that and I'm actually pushing through a turning point right now. 
Um, you know, I, I worked full time at a privately owned radio station for the last 15 years. And in May of 2019, they were purchased by a corporation and uh, my position was eliminated. So for the first time in 42 years, I was unemployed. And, um, uh, you know, I was stressed and anxious and, um, but with the support of many of my friends um, and family, um, they gave me the encouragement to, to realize that perhaps this is really the way it should be. That, you know, this not to sound cliche, but one door closes, another door opens. And I really have learned that this was a blessing in disguise and that um, um, what I've put out there in the universe, it has not come back to bite me in the behind. It's actually opened up many, many doors and it's given me the, the strength to, to be able to take that step back and say, okay, maybe I need to re-examine what I wanna do with Botiaticus. And um, I'm excited, you know, I, I gave myself the goal of, of um, creating a new product um, and I'm working on that now. So hopefully by April, I'll have another product to launch. Uh, if you had to sum up, what is the most rewarding thing about what you do? Um, I think that the most rewarding thing is that I'm able to, um, help save lives for those who have no voice and who can't um, speak for themselves. Um, I'm very heavily involved with rescue. Um, I, I also created a group called Newcastle Community Cats and I work um, closely with a very, very um, few volunteers at this point with uh, feral colonies. I also work with, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Faithful Friends, um, I, do, I do trapping for them. Um, we're in the middle of a big relocation project. So it's, it's, um, it's, that's what gives me the most reward is actually being able to save a life. Uh, last year I had somebody reach out to me and um, they had 28 chickens that needed to be saved. And in three days we saved 28 chickens. <laughs> <laughs> like no they kidding. were running loose? No, they were needing to be relocated. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, they reached out, somebody reached out to me and they said, can you do this? And I said, I will do this. And we did it. And 28 chickens are now living happily on a farm and I can't disclose where. <laughs> <laughs> well, better than where they were. <laughs> yes, better than where they were. <laughs> well, can you tell us about uh, an important business or personal discovery that you've made and how it's impacted where you are today? For me personally, I have um, struggled with self-esteem, fear-based anxiety, depression. Um, I've overcome dark days. And I think the best discovery is that I can. I can be creative. I can help. I can have fun. I can be successful. I can be what I want. And that is entirely up to me. And that's it. I can. All right. Well, kind of on that note, if you could go back and share some wisdom mm -hmm. or guidance to your younger self, what would that be? I thought, I thought a lot about that one. Um, you know, it's, um, I think what I would do is um, I would tell myself to not let other people deter me from what I feel is my own path. Um, that it, it's not selfish, it is really self. You know, um, I, I, um, I left home uh, at a very early age. I graduated high school on my own. And um, I never had the opportunity to go to college because I was working from the time I was in 11th grade to, you know, recently. And well, actually, I've never stopped working. So, so, but, you know, I, I think that a lot of times along the way, you know, you have all these hopes and dreams and people may be like, you know, maybe, maybe it's not really reachable or maybe that's not attainable. And, and you begin to feel that. And even with bow tie atticus, I've been in that situation where people are like, oh, you know, bow ties for dogs. Well, guess what? It works. And you know what? No, no one, nobody could tell me today that you can't do this or that it's not going to work because I can prove them wrong. I am proof that it's wrong. So I can and I will you know, and it doesn't have to be a huge jump. It, you know, I mean, look, look where I'm at after five years. You know, I started with one bow tie and, and now, you know, I go to an event with 300 bow ties. So it's, it's, I can and I will. And that's what I would tell my younger self is you can and you will. <laughs>
Well, if you, you can, you can um, visit me online at bowtieaticus.org and you'll see where I, I choose a different rescue every month and I donate back for every product to that rescue. Um, and then I, of course, I have my weekly um, small business give back. Um, so if you, if you visit us on any of our social media pages, you can see um, all the rescues that we help. So if you even randomly run through them and put a, pick one out, and donate that right there is success. So, so, and helpful. Um, and that's really, really what I want people to do is to um, support your local rescues, you know, um, no matter where you are, um, they need it. 